I lead at EC3. Juniors learning to become the leaders of tomorrow. Doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Get out of your way to make someone else's day. Work harder than anyone else. Protect your integrity and be kind. I lead at EC3. John Godfrey grew up in Elizabethtown, KY, and is an alum, alumnus of St. James Elementary School, TK Stone Junior High, and Elizabethtown High School. After studying psychology and pre professional studies at the University of Notre Dame, he completed medical school at the University of Louisville. He then studied internal medicine at Mayo Clinic, Rochester, and is board certified in this specialty. He and his wife, Kelly, then moved to Elizabethtown in 2001, where John practiced internal medicine and private practice. Since late 2014, John has served in an administrative role as the hospital's chief medical officer at Baptist Health Park. In his free time, John enjoys spending time with his wife and five children, Ben, 23, Mary Kate, 21, Elizabeth, 20, Lauren, 18, and Grace, 15, jogging, hiking, walking, and reading, as well as attending his kids' sports activities. Thank you. So, how's everybody doing today? Uh, I see some familiar faces, so um, I, I hope everybody's having a good day. And Mrs. Wright has asked me to talk to her class every year, or, or club. Is this a class or a club? A little bit of both. Um, it's a club on leadership and, and what that means to me. And, and just coming and, and sharing some tips and tricks, and, and then also to be able to answer questions that you all might have about what leadership looks like um, from my perspective, especially leadership of physicians and you know the doctors in the community and, and how does one do that? Um, because it was never a role that I envisioned myself being in when I was at your age. Um, I always thought of myself when I was a junior, senior in high school as either being a doctor, an architect, or an engineer. And that's what I wanted to become. But then I got to college and I couldn't do calculus very well. So I wasn't very good at math. So that excluded engineering and architecture students had to stay up for long periods of time doing projects and I needed sleep. So I said, I'm gonna to go to medical school and be a doctor because they obviously get lots of sleep. <laughs> so little did I know at that point, but my, my journey has been uh, a, a nice one. It's, it's um, been fun, it's been exciting. And, and where I sit now, I, I've transitioned from you know, practicing medicine, seeing patients every day, to actually helping lead the hospital and lead the medical staff. And so um, what you see behind you here, these are some of the doctors on our medical staff. Um, so Dr. Bart Dawson up in the right, he's a cardiologist or a heart doctor. Um, uh, Dr. Natalie Harper there underneath Dr. Dawson, um, she is a hematology oncology doctor. So she de deals with cancer and diseases of the blood. Um, we've got Dr. Stuart Blankenship, an orthopedic surgeon. Um, that's bones and joints, and when those things go wrong, if you break something or sprain something, you see Dr. Blankenship. And then Dr. Will Porter. Um, he is a, another type of cancer doctor that treats cancer with the use of radiation. So that was something that I knew nothing about all through my medical school and training. And I remember my first week of practice, I was introduced to the radiation oncologist, and I was like, what do you do? And I had no clue, and so I, I've come to rely on, on their skills and expertise and, and how they treat patients. So, next slide. Thank you. So, what I wanted to do is just kind of go through some pictures and I, I tried to represent different leaders across the world. Um, and so, I don't know if you all can pick out or name any of these people. Some of them are famous, hopefully you all know. Um, I, I've bombed on this in years past because I obviously picked people that kids your all's age didn't know. So I, I tried to do a better job. So do y'all know who this lady is? Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth. All right. So she just passed away, right? And she was a leader of her country for how many years? Like 50, 60 some odd years or thereabouts. Um, next slide. Anybody know this guy? Okay. And what, why is he so significant? What did he do recently? Anybody know? Yes. Has anybody ever heard of Roger Maris? So Roger Maris was a guy from 
probably the 50s and 60s, and he hit, he had the uh, most number of home runs um, up until Babe Ruth broke that record. Um, he just broke Roger Maris's um, single season home run record. Um, so he's had 62 home runs this season. He was named the American League MVP. So pretty significant baseball player, leader on the New York Yankees. Um, and so his leadership is very different, obviously, than Queen Elizabeth's, right? So, all right, next slide. You know who this guy is? Pope Francis. So he's a religious and spiritual leader. So think of how that's different than what Aaron Judge does. Or is it different? All right? So, okay, next slide. Anybody know her? Come on. Has anybody heard of Harry Potter? Anybody what? J.K. Rowling. Has anybody read a book of Harry Potter or watched a movie? All right. So she started it all. Right? She had the whole idea, the whole concept in her mind before she ever started writing. She knew everything that she was going to do before she wrote those seven books. And so I always think that's really cool. And apparently she was not a famous author. I think she was actually kind of down and out, kind of poor, um, before, when she undertook the task of just writing out this really cool story. And, and so now she has, um, she's world famous. She takes what she has done and, and she's trying to turn that into good for charitable organizations in Great Britain and England. So, um, okay, next slide. You guys know LeBron, everybody? And, and so he was a great basketball player, and now he has retired from basketball, and you see him in different events, you know, where he is trying, I think he's retired, isn't he? He's still playing? Yeah. Okay, sorry. So, but he is trying to use his presence, his leadership, to help social concerns and, and help um, people think differently about the world, right? And so... How is his leadership similar to Pope Francis or to Queen Elizabeth, right? And so he's using his position as a great athlete to, to help lead the, you know, not only his team, but his community, his country. So next slide. You know her? Taylor Swift, right? Do you all view her as a leader in any way? No one does? Um, so does she set the standard for music? Does she set the standard for culture um, in our country? Uh, what's that? Um, is she someone that other people try to emulate and, and be more like? Does anybody here try to dress like her? I don't know what she dresses like, honestly. I, I'm not a big Taylor Swift fan. But, um, but think of how she helped shape um, the people around her and, and help influence the people around her. Okay, next slide. I hope everybody knows this guy because we just had his, his day yesterday. All right. Yeah, it was yesterday. <laughs> so um, hugely important leader in our country, in our world, and, and how he has helped redefine you know, the basic decency of how we treat one another as people, as humans. So. Um, so he's, a, to me, an inspiration. All right. Anybody know this guy? Everybody has a phone, right? Do you all know who created your phone? This guy. All right. So I don't know why he hasn't won, like, a Nobel Prize for engineering or, or something. Because he was the inventor of the iPhone. Just pretty remarkable product, if you think about it. I mean... Could you all have an idea at your age, bring that out, and, and create a product that is used by several billion people? And can you imagine your life without a phone? So you, we all owe it to this guy. Um, so think about the, the creativity that he had. And then everybody knows Apple computers, right? Anybody use an Apple computer? He created the first one in his garage. So it's pretty... Pretty interesting story if you ever want to read up on him. And he is deceased now. He died from pancreatic cancer, so a few years ago. And then the next slide. So this is Jesus Christ, so great leader as well. Okay, next slide. 
So this is kind of the, the heart of what I wanted to, to share with you. And um, I told Ms. Wright, you know, leadership starts from a foundation. Um, many of you probably see people that you're surrounded with who you think, oh, they're the leader. We should, you know, kind of do stuff with them. Um, I remember terms when I was in high school of, oh, that's the popular kid or, or they're the um, they're the star and whatever, you know, the show or the sport. Or, and, and so they were, the, quote, the designated leader. But there's more to it than that, I think. Um, there are certain foundational principles that you probably aren't aware of yet, but that's why I wanted to share these with you. Um, and, and we call those your values. Have you all ever heard or, or thought about what you consider to be your values? Have you? Have you ever reflected on that and just sat and thought quietly to yourself of what you hold most dear? Okay, so these are my values. Um, tell me, just anybody, shout out, what, what's a value that you would not change? Respect? Respect? Mm. Just open sharing. There's no right or wrong. Family. Mm-hmm. Honesty. Honesty. Mm-hmm. So another word for that is integrity. So, um, so I, I have been fortunate enough to participate in some different exercises where we had time to just sit and think about what is it that you hold most dear. So integrity. Um, humility. Do you all know what humility means? Um, I get examples of this literally every day. Um, last night I was in a meeting with about 10 different physicians and all eyes were on me because I made a mistake and um, didn't communicate things well so I could either be defensive about that and try and push back on all these different physicians or I could just simply accept it and say, I screwed up, sorry, I'll do better the next time, right? So that takes a bit of humility to admit that in front of your peers, right? But every day, you gotta do that. Um, have you all had examples of humility in your own lives? Where you, you get pointed out in front of a group um, and it doesn't feel very good, does it? You know, so. But it's one of my core values. So, trust is another one. Um, courage. So, you know, how often do you get called upon to do something that someone else doesn't? Y'all ever had that um, experience or been asked to stand up in front of a class and do something that makes you uncomfortable? Uh, takes some guts, doesn't it? So, um, do you have examples of where you may have been courageous in your own life? Different, different things that have come up. Family. Um, you guys heard that I've got five kids, got a wife. We've been married 24 and a half, going on 25 years. So family is very important to me. And everything that I do is kind of centered first around God and then secondly around my family. You know, That's why I, I work hard. That's why I get up every day at 5 in the morning. That's why you, you stay late. That's why you work weekends, things like that, because you're trying to make a nice environment, a nice living, if you would, for your, for your family. Um, it's not necessarily for me. Um, I could literally be in a small one-room shack somewhere, and I'd be happy. So, um, But those are just examples of my values. And, and I would encourage you all, when you get some free time, do, does anybody journal? Does anybody write your thoughts down? You all ever, do you know what I'm talking about? Have, have any of your teachers ever shared that, that idea with you before? It, it's a, a really nice way just to work out frustrations, work out your thoughts, and it doesn't have to be anything formal, just write. Um, and so occasionally I'll just, I've got a, a little notebook that I keep on my desk, and I'll just write down different ideas, different thoughts that come to my head. Um, and in doing that, that helps you formulate your thinking um, a little easier, a little more clearly, because it keeps you on track, 
Um, you know how your mind gets really distracted when, when you're thinking um, and it's just kind of a flight of different ideas. Um, but when you write things down, in, in doing that, I would encourage you to, to think about what are those things that you stand for? What are those things that you won't budge on in your life? So that when you get to college or when you get to work, what are, when people push back against you, what are you going to respectfully and politely not bend on? Y'all ever thought of that? So, because it's going to happen and you, you will get challenged. And so these values serve as your foundation, right? So everything big in life um, has to have a foundation. So working at the hospital, you may have seen in the back, there's a big construction project going on. So they spent a ton of time working on the foundation before anything started going up. Um, they spent probably three months just preparing the land, getting the, the foundation built so that then they could build that. And, and for me, these values serve as that foundation for everything that I do in my work. Um, and there's not a day that goes by that these values aren't pulled out in some, some way, shape, or form. Okay? Um, so leadership tips. Um, these are just in no particular order things that I have found very useful. Um, that help me in my daily work and I just wanted to share them with you. Um, and, and so probably the most important thing is having the courage to speak up when you see something, when you hear something. Um, and when you're in a meeting, when you're in a classroom discussion, do you all ever find that when someone asks the question you actually learn something from that question as well? But who here is afraid to raise their hand to ask the question? Is everybody afraid? Because I know I am, you know. And certainly when I was in high school, I was that way. It probably wasn't until I got into my residency training in medicine or beyond that I was like, you know what, to heck with being afraid. Just ask the question because there's going to be someone else that will benefit from this. And, and invariably there is. And invariably I learn from it and hopefully someone else learns from it. So, so don't be afraid to speak up. Um, you know, when a teacher calls on you to, to say, what do you think? Share it, because you're going to learn more. You're going to learn how to defend yourself in kind of a verbal way, and someone might actually learn something from you. Um, and so uh, an example of speaking up that um, we are interviewing for a hospital president. So I don't know if you all knew that we just got a new hospital leader uh, and so I got to participate in the interviews, and one of the questions that I asked was about their values. And it was really interesting the, how the candidate answered. And afterwards, about four of my colleagues came up to me and said, that question that you asked formulated my decision to not offer this guy the job. Because the way he answered was not consistent with our organization's values and even many of our personal values. So it was a really interesting comment that no one else really had the courage to, to ask. Um, but then they came up afterwards and, and shared with me how that influenced them. So, so I thought that was a really cool um, example of, of being able to speak up. Um, hard work. Who's afraid of hard work? Anyone? I know I was when I was your age. <laughs> so um, have you all had to do hard work before? Stuff that you can't stand and it just, it's like nails on a chalkboard. Do y'all even use chalkboards anymore? <laughs> y'all ever heard nails on a chalkboard? Yeah. It, so hard work sometimes is very difficult and challenging and, and grating, right? Um, but there isn't anything that you'll do in life that, um, in leadership that will make you successful without hard work. Um, I know people do win the lottery, but that's the one example where you don't have to work very hard to, to do it. So, um, so who, who's doing sports? Who's doing music? Who's doing you know, academics? Everybody is doing something, right? Where you're working hard um, to, so. And then excellence. Um, what does that mean to you guys? Yeah. Um, maybe like being consistent. Mm -hmm. 
So certainly you have to be consistent to be excellent, right? Because you can't be on one day and off the next and, or off three days and then come back the fourth day, right? And is that a low standard in your mind or a reasonably high standard? And, and I think it's all of those. So excellence to me, you know, means those things. It means showing up every day and, and giving it your best. And, you know, you hear people sometimes talk about, well, all I need to do is put forth a B or a C effort and I'll get by. Those people typically are not successful in the end because you've got to keep pressuring yourself, keep trying to um, achieve, keep trying to do things to, to make whatever it is that you're working on as good as it can be, right? Um, and you understand the difference between that and ambition? Because in my mind, ambition kind of has a negative connotation. Um, the challenge that I see with ambition, because I think uh, I am certainly ambitious in that sense, but what you want to be cautious of is to be doing that for others and not be ambitious just for yourself. So self-centered ambition is never a good thing. Um, and, and so always try and think of, of excellence and trying to strive to achieve and ambition. They're, they're similar, um, but think of it in terms of others. And, and when you do so, you'll be a lot more successful as a leader um, than if all you're doing is thinking about yourself, okay? Um, and, uh, and, and I read something recently that, that described that, and it really kind of struck me because I always thought ambition was, you know, a little more noble. Um, and, and of late, I thought, hey, maybe that's not such a noble thing. I mean, you want to be ambitious, but again, how can I be ambitious for others? Um, and, and that, again, reflects leadership. Um, what about listening? Um, do you all get in environments with friends or with adults and you find people that don't listen. So when you get into a, a situation where you are supposed to be the listener, is it hard sometimes? Do you want to do the talking? Do you want to jump in? So do you have to kind of pinch yourself or sit on your hands? I know I do. I, it is a struggle because I am someone that will jump right in and, and start yapping away um, without and, and I have to make a conscientious effort to listen. So um, sometimes I'll write on like my paper or whatever, if there's a meeting, uh, I'll put AQSL, which is ask questions, speak last. And, and so by asking questions, you're demonstrating that you're listening, right? You're hopefully paying attention to what the other person is saying. You're asking some appropriate question. Um, but you're not necessarily revealing your thoughts. You're pulling it out of people. Um, you ever heard teachers do that or seen teachers do that? They teach by asking questions. You ever tried to do that in your own interactions with others? Um, and have you ever walked away? Have you ever had the experience where someone is confiding something to you and you don't do anything but listen? And the other person is like, that was a really great conversation and you didn't add a whole lot to the conversation. Have you had that experience yet? Um, have you ever thought about that? Because doesn't it seem weird, like when you talk very little, but yet the other person perceives you as a great conversationalist? It's different, isn't it? Um, and so listening is very powerful, and, and sometimes the best leaders are listening, and they're getting the individual to talk through their ideas and they often come to the conclusion, come to the answer that they need without the leader ever having to say what that needs to be, right? And, and sometimes it's a better idea than what the, the leader could have done. So, so just kind of think about that where, um, you know, sometimes quietness and listening is more powerful than doing all the talking. Um, um, does anybody like to read? I would encourage all of you to get in the habit of reading a few pages a day, just a few minutes a day, because if you do it consistently, day in, day out, it will give you new ideas, open up ideas. Get a book, get an audio book or, or something, um, and, and it's going to help you. It, it can only help you pick a topic that you enjoy. 
So for me, um, I learned that when I was in medical school. Uh, I did not like, I like to read socially when I was in high school, but then college just kind of dominated. I, I did not read for pleasure at all in college. Medical school, all I read was medical stuff. But then in my residency, they just hammered it into us that they expected us to read outside of our 12 to 15 hour days. They said, we want you to read two hours a day every day. And I was like, that's impossible. But people did it. And, and what I took from that was this consistency of, of continuing to f educate yourself, continuing to further yourself in some way. And so you're in high school, you're getting a lot thrown at you, you're gonna go to work or college, and you're gonna get a lot thrown at you. But what happens beyond that? What happens in four to five years when you're done with all these things? How are you gonna continue to improve yourself? So I am 51. How do I continue to get better every day? Right? Have you all ever thought of that? How do you continue to get better? Um, you're in school, so you're getting better. Hopefully you're smarter this year than you were last year, right? <laughs> but um, have you ever thought of how you can consistently explore some subject, some topic that, enjoys, that you enjoy, whether it's sports or space or, I don't know, geology or something so um, so my habit when I read is I read um, a spiritual book a few pages a day I read a, a classic book um, I'm reading War and Peace right now and it's all of a thousand pages and I've been working on it for about three years okay so um, but I try and read a couple pages every day and then I read a book on leadership or on business a couple pages every day. And so what that does is, A, I, it keeps me from falling asleep when I read, because I'm, I've got a tendency that when I read, I will go to sleep. But if I flip the subject every three or four pages, then it keeps me awake. But over time, I can knock out lots of books and, and have different ideas to share with others. So why I say that, how does that relate to leadership you're always trying to stay one step ahead of everybody else. You're always trying to create new ideas. To, someone's got to come up with what you're doing, right? And, and so who's going to lead the charge? And if you're not trying to further yourself, trying to improve yourself, then how, how do you lead others, right? So, and that kind of gets to the topic of being curious. So. Um, listening, asking questions. Um, when you're talking with someone, ask, ask interesting questions of them um, just because you're curious and want to know more. Um, you all ever tried to do that in your conversations with others, or with your teammates, with your, um, I don't know, band mates if you're in band or music? Um, so, And then lastly, um, someone mentioned respect as one of the, the values. Um, always be respectful and, and be kind because you can have very difficult conversations with people, but you can do it in a way that you're not screaming, shouting, throwing things. And, and you can get your point across. Um, sometimes kindness and respect go, well not sometimes, they always go further than anger and frustration and, and so just keep that in the back of your mind as you get in those difficult situations, those circumstances with your friends, um, because later that translates into coworkers and people that you're interacting with, right? And, and if you're kind and respectful, working through your differences, not to say that you're not gonna have those differences, but how you do that. Um, and so um, I'm dealing with a situation at work right now where, um, a coworker got asked to not, well, he didn't actually get asked. He just got taken off of a meeting and nobody told him. So I'm having to be one of the people to communicate that to him. And, and he's frustrated naturally. Um, and so how am I showing kindness and respect to him in a moment where he's not really wanted in this environment anymore? So that's so a hard conversation. 
so those are just some of my tips and tricks, I, I guess. Um, my foundation, which is my values. Um, uh, I would, again, encourage you all to think about your own values. Think how that can serve as a foundation for you. And, um, and as you guys go through high school and then into college or work, you know, how that can help shape your um, relationships with others. And um, so. so what questions would you all have for me? Anyone interested in physical therapy, nursing, becoming a doctor, a dentist, dental hygienist, <laughs> any of that stuff? Was it hard? You got it. <laughs> Was it hard to get into medical school? Um, I thought it was because my GPA was not as good as it needed to be. Um, if, if you go through college and you get mainly A's with a few B's, um, you know, I think a, a GPA of 3.6, 3.7 or above, and you've got some other extracurricular activities and other things, then you've got a good shot to get into medical school. And, and there's an entrance exam called the MCAT, um, and if you do well on that, it's kind of like the SAT for medical school or ACT for medical school. So, I would actually say physical therapy school is probably more difficult to get in, or at least when I was going through, to become a physical therapist was more difficult than to become a doctor, um, as far as getting accepted. Um, and um, dental school, it's a very similar process, but I don't think it's quite as, um, uh, it's not quite as difficult. There's not, you don't have to have quite as high of a GPA to get in, so. Mm -hmm. Um, like getting through medical school? Yeah, like you um, say it was a lot. It was very time consuming. Um, if you put the time in, you're going to do well. And most medical schools that I'm aware of do not want students to flunk. Um, they, they want to get those people through and, and to graduate them because the country, the community, they need physicians. And so there's a huge interest in getting physicians to graduate, and, and they really do bend over backwards to help medical students. The hardest part is getting in. Um, I personally found college more difficult than medical school. Um, for me, if I studied a long time in college, I could never guarantee that I was going to do well on, a, on an exam. In medical school, if I studied hard, I knew I was going to do well. And, and so. Um, the big difference between college and med school was the volume of work um, and the volume of information. So in college and in high school, I would usually review something two, three, four times, you know, like you're studying for a test, right? Um, in med school, if you got through the information one time, you did well once because um, you would have notebooks literally that big for an exam, one exam. It was hard. Um, but if you got through it, you went to class, you paid attention, they didn't make the questions so difficult, you know, so you could usually get through it. So um, I don't know any of my classmates in med school that flunked out, um, whereas I know students in college that did not graduate. So um, it's just, it's a different focus, a different, um, yeah. And, and that's part of lifelong learning, too, because they instilled in me, um, I guess, habits that I have to keep learning new stuff. What I learned in medical school is actually out of date now. Um, so while it's a foundation, most of it is not used anymore because it, medicine has progressed so much. So, What other questions do you all have? Um, it was at first, um, but I utilize lots of these, um, courage, trust, integrity, respect. <laughs> you know, when you engage 
you know, another person, and, and especially someone that is more likely smarter than you are, um, you know, you have to come at them, I always think, from beneath, looking up, as opposed to coming top down and looking down on them. And, and I always view my role in physician leadership as we're all equals, and, and how do you move that line of equals one direction or another? No one's really like in the front because then that means that they're technically better than, and, and I wouldn't put any physician better than another. Um, but we're all kind of in that line together and how do we move the line together? And, and it takes partnership and collaboration and lots and lots of conversation um, you know, to work through differences um, and, and get people to to just see the differences of opinion. And, and many times I'm the one that is seeing the differences and, and kind of my mind is opened and you, know, you see things a different way. Um, and so uh, you know, physicians are just people too. You know, they all went to high school at one point. You know? um, they, they put their socks and shoes on just like you guys do. So, um, but they've just got a lot of school under their belt. And, and so that's the big difference. So. What other questions? I enjoy what I do. I enjoy getting to work with docs and help other people. Um, so if anyone is interested in healthcare, um, you know, you want to talk further, I'd be happy to talk more. If you want to talk one-on-one, -on -one, happy to do that as well. Or, you know, as your year goes um, and you say, hey, I want to go talk to that guy again, just let Miss Wright know and she can get us connected. So happy to, happy to help you guys. And lots of opportunities, you know, within the world of healthcare and um, lots of different fields. So, um, all right. Well, you guys have a wonderful day.